Hi, this is Mrs. Kohler, and today we're going to be looking at some stuff under a microscope. And I just wanted to show you, because I know most of you can't afford to have a high-quality microscope of your own at home, but um, a lot of the video that we're taking today is using one of these. And this is a cell phone microscope. So um, my boyfriend picked this up for me um, off of Amazon. It cost about $70. Um, so it's it's not all that expensive, and it's portable. It's not, it's you know, it's about the size of the palm of your hand. So what you have here is this clip up top here clips onto your cell phone's camera. And then when I have it adjusted properly, um, you can see that whatever is behind the microscope shows up on the cell phone's camera. Now obviously this isn't focused on my hand, but you can see my hand moving around behind the camera. Um, so it just fits right onto your phone and then you can record or take pictures of whatever you're doing through the camera app on your phone. Um, these two knobs right here are the focus. So this one adjusts how large you see the image. It can go anywhere from 60 times to 100 times. And this adjusts the actual focus on this bottom knob. And down at the bottom here, there is a light. There's a UV light you can turn on. And then there's a regular bright light that you can turn on. Um, and it just runs on two AAA batteries. So it's a pretty neat thing. It's affordable. It's something that you can pick up if it's something that you would like to use. So cell phone microscope. Now remember when you look through a microscope, you can focus up and down through layers. So this drop of water is almost like a room. You could focus the microscope on the floor. You could focus the microscope on the surface of the desk. You could focus the microscope on the top of people's heads. So by going up and down through that layer of water, you can look for different organisms. Okay, so what you are looking at here is some pond water underneath my cell phone microscope. So we're looking at some pond water for Mrs. Beaver's pond under here. So as you're looking, um, we just saw something uh, moving around on the screen that is some sort of small organisms zooming around inside that water. So the other things that you're seeing, these green bits, are different types of algae. And I do believe, am I right, Mrs. Beaver? Is that a planaria crawling around right there? Moving very, very it's slowly. Oh, it is moving. OK, mm -hmm. so it could be a planaria. Yep, looks like it. The other thing that has that shape is a diatom, although that it's a little too big for a diatom. There are banana diatoms that look like a straightened out banana. When I yeah, that's a planarian. So what we have here right in the middle is some algae. So algae is a eukaryotic organism because it does, the cells do contain a nucleus, and it also has other membrane-bound organelles. It has chloroplasts inside of it. Chloroplasts are one of the membrane-bound organelles, and that's what contains the green pigment that makes it appear green to us. And you can actually see in the center of the screen, you can see some white lines along the algae, and those are showing the break between different cells in the algae stalk. Yeah, everything we got that's moving is real little. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's a worm. See that? Mm -hmm. Actually, that might be a mosquito larvae. If you let water, a buckets of water, out in your yard, mosquitoes will lay their eggs in them, and you can tell that they're mosquito larvae because of this movement. They just kind of fold in half. That's the way they move through the water. They do breathe oxygen. The mosquito larvae has a at the tip of their tail is I lost him. <laughs> <laughs> But they will attach to the to the surface of the water. They'll break through that surface tension, that uh, that thick skin. We got a fall box. Yeah. Oh, nice! There it is. That big green circle. 
is called a volvox, and it's actually one of the colonial protozoans that will that live in a colony. There's a whole bunch of little cells inside of it. Okay, each one of those green dots that you're seeing is an individual cell. So they work together almost like a eukaryotic organism, except that each one of those cells could live completely on its own. Yeah, I can't take one of my liver cells and have it go live on its own. It needs me. But each cell in that volvox could live on its own, but they get an advantage by living together. And they have some of the most primitive examples of um, specialization in cells, because when they're living as a colony, some cells do one job and some cells do another job. Very cool. I've never seen that in my I have life. never seen a live ball box. Yeah, that's awesome. You guys are witnessing history right here. Miss mm -hmm. Kohler and Miss Beaver are learning things too. I love it. Now that big green mass, that is a piece of duckweed. And that's multicellular. You can almost make out the cells in that. I see Maybe it's an amoeba. Too. It might be an amoeba. So we got something moving around here. We're not positive what it is. Believe it or not, we don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Especially pond water. It's green, which is interesting. So is it green? in and of itself that it can carry out photosynthesis or has it eaten algae and you're seeing the green algal cells in its body. Here's now, a there goes. That looks almost like a rotifer. That's yeah, a rotifer. That's a rotifer. But that thing... We're not sure. And the that mosquito larva thing. wants to steal the show. Mm. Right through the middle. You can see his eyes. There's some plant matter, debris, and you can see some protists zipping around all over the place. Very, very small. I'm on 100 magnification. There's the same view on 400 times whole city, the little critters, protists, zipping around. Look at how many there are in one little corner of a drop of water. Unbelievable. Okay, so what you're looking at here is a common aquarium plant called Anacharis. This is what we're going to be looking at under the microscope. Um, it has kind of a feathery leaf type structure. The reason we use Anacharis in biology class is because the leaves of an Anacharis plant are only a few cells thick, so it's easy for the light to shine through for us to be able to see the details on individual cells. So this is what we're about to look at under the microscope. So, as you're looking down here, you can see a lot of different rectangles in here. Each individual rectangle is a cell. And I'm going to try to find you a thinner part of the leaf so that we can see the actual chloroplasts inside the cell. All right, so you can see what I'm talking about a little bit here. You can see all the individual green rectangles. But then inside of each rectangle, there are distinct green spots. In each one of those green spots that you're seeing is a chloroplast. So as I focus up and down a little bit, different areas of the, you can see spots in different areas of the cell. And that's because the cells aren't flat, they're three-dimensional. So as I am focusing up and down, you're actually seeing chloroplasts in different layers of the plant itself.